Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's call. Tonight's call is Beach Profits Cash Flow, Navigating the Seasons for Maximum Gain. So I know that if you're watching this channel, it's because you have been thinking about getting some beach profit. You have been maybe thinking about doing short-term rentals with Airbnb, um, and you're thinking about ways that you can make money and have an investment property all at the same time. And so tonight, what I really want to teach everybody is about how to really maximize your profits when you get an investment property, because the truth is, it is not open season all year round. You're not going to make money all year round. So there does need to be a sense of a balance of how you look at your portfolio, how you look at your investment, as well as the income that's coming in for that investment. So for those of you all who don't know me, my name is Tammy Washington de Sension. I'm the creative travel trade invest, and I'm an expat. I've been living in the Dominican Republic for the past four years. Um, and uh, one of the things that my husband and I have been doing for over the past year or so is managing Airbnbs and helping individuals just like yourself to find investment properties. So on tonight's call, we're going to go through a couple of different things. We're going to go through the cash flow calendar so you can really understand the tourism season here so that you can can plan accordingly. Um, we're going to help you to determine the best plan for maximizing your profits. And then we're going to teach you also how to do research, how to highlight things uh, to look for. We also have recently started a Covest project, which we'll let you know some more information about. And then we'll also give you the deets on some upcoming investment tours that we have and that you can be a part of. So let's go ahead and jump into tonight's training. First and foremost, what I want you guys to know is that all seasons aren't money seasons, right? All seasons aren't money seasons, especially when it comes to having investment properties that you're going to use for short-term rentals. So it's very important that you know and understand the nature of each season so you can plan accordingly, okay? So the first season that we're going to look at is January through March in the Caribbean and specifically in the Dominican Republic. This is what is considered to be high season. OK, high season. And if you look at the image, this is when people think of the Dominican Republic. This is what they think. People everywhere, people partying, passing out drinks to each other. Well, most of that actually happens during high season, which are January, February and March. There are a couple of reasons this happens. Number one, this is the best weather all year round anywhere in the world. I'm telling you, this is the best weather. It is absolutely perfect. It is warm. There's a nice ocean breeze. I promise you living here year round, January through March, that's when we have the absolute best weather season of the year. Okay. And because that is the best weather season of the year, we have what's called snowbirds. And I know, I, I hope that's not offensive to anyone, but here in the Caribbean, that's what we call people um, from cold countries like Europe, Russia, Canada, these people have basically been experiencing the cold and the snow since October. So usually by January or February, they are so sick and tired of cold. They're so sick and tired of the snow that they are literally looking to escape. And so there are a lot of people who will literally come here January through March. Um, you'll see a lot of Russians, a lot of French people, um, lots and lots of uh, Europeans, as I just said, a lot of people from Germany. You'll see these people where they will come and they'll stay for a month or two in an Airbnb because they're, they're, they're just like, I can't take it anymore. And that's literally what they'll say. Also during this season, you will see a lot of retirees, right? You will see a lot of retirees and pretty much for the same reason. They're older, they have flexible schedules. And oftentimes by this time of year, you know, the holidays have passed. Um, they're ready for some relaxation, and most people don't want to be here, quote unquote, during spring break. Um, and so you will see a lot of retirees here during that season as well. So generally, because high season is when a lot of people are coming, we understand the concept of supply and demand. We understand that because it is high season, the prices go up, right? So if you're running your Airbnb, obviously this is where you want to put um, the prices that you want to have that's your highest where you can make the most money you want to try to make as much money as you can during this season the next season we kind of call it mid-season that's april through july okay and what generally happens is it slows down a lot of those snowbirds as we say are the retirees they've been here for a couple of months some of them especially the people who are going to be looking to rent airbnbs they've been here for a couple months 
Um, and more importantly, it's getting warm in their countries, right? So now their countries become bearable. And so they tend to go back a little bit. Um, at the, you know, when you start talking about April and May, children are, you know, finishing up school. So you don't have a lot of people really coming. You do have a surge around spring break. So again, that, um, that little period between March and April where a lot of people are going on spring break, you will see a surge. Uh, but after that, you will see kind of a lull. You'll see your numbers start to go down because people really aren't traveling as much. All right. And that's generally about April to May. Then what happens um, during uh, May? Children start to get out of school. Sometimes it's like June now, actually. And so around June or July, you'll see things kind of pick up a little bit, especially when it comes to families, because families generally go on vacation during the summertime. So you will see a lot of Americans. I find like I find a lot of Americans here during the summertime. And I think that's because we just think in terms of, oh, it's summer, we go on lots of vacations, right? Um, so people definitely take advantage of summer break. But here's the last and final reason why mid-season does have a bit of a lull. Right around the end of May, Unfortunately, our beaches, if you look at the picture, um, this is what everybody thinks that the Dominican Republic looks like all year round. That's not always true. Um, towards May-ish, towards the end of May, going into June and July, the beaches get lots and lots of seaweed. And from what I understand, that happens all over the Caribbean. Even Florida has been complaining about it as well. Like just global warming, there's just a lot more seaweed on the beaches. Now we do have people out here in Punta Cana because Punta Cana is a tourist town. So literally you will see trucks in the morning going up and down the beaches, clearing out the seaweed, but sometimes it still gets really bad. Sometimes it's piles and piles and you can come one week and there are piles and piles of seaweed and you can come the next week and it'll be clear because it's the weather guys. You know, it's, it's really, it's not anything that anyone can really do about it except clean it up when it comes. So those are some of the reasons why you will see during that season, a lot of people will choose not to um, come. And then also just a little side note for those of you all, you know, who want to do Airbnb here, it's really good to make sure that the property that you purchase has a pool, right? Because June and July, living here, we know the beaches are covered with seaweed. Yes, you can go to the beach, you can have fun. But sometimes a lot of us will go to the pool instead um, because you know you don't have to deal with that, right? So that is something to, to think about. There are some people who don't like going to the beach even though they wanna come to the Caribbean. All right, let's talk about the next season, which is low season. Now, low season happens between August and October every single year. And as you can imagine, why is August, you know, the low season? Everybody's going back to school, right? So kids are going back to school. Parents are getting their um, kids ready for school. And even if people don't have kids or they don't have school age, you know, children, there's something psychologically, especially with Americans, and I think for anybody, there's something psychologically around August where people are in kind of this transition mode of, hey, this is the time I'm supposed to be starting something new. So you, you won't see a lot of people going on um, vacation, right? Um, the second thing about August to October, this is officially hurricane season. Um, as, I am, uh, as I am sitting here recording this video, today is August the 25th, right? And we just had a week long tropical storm where pretty much, you know, we didn't have everything shut down, like grocery stores and things like that stayed open, but it pretty much rained for three days. And like my husband, for example, works in tourism. And so he's been home all week <laughs> because we've been going through a tropical storm. So that is another reason why people um, don't generally visit. And because it is low season, guess what happens? Generally prices drop right? So if you're going to be an owner, you can expect that around this time, you'll probably see less bookings than you normally would. Um, and one of the things that you will see is people will start to lower their prices to get people in um, to actually, you know, so that they can continue to make money, right? Um, the other thing is, if you want to flip that and say, hey, when should I come to the Dominican Republic? This is the time to come. Normally, I'll be honest with you guys, I've been here for four years and like we get some storms, but we had, we've had one bad hurricane, 
in the four years that I've been here. And within a week, they pretty much had Punta Cana and it was bad, but they, they pretty much had Punta Cana all cleaned up. Um, and so normally I'll say like in September, you're really, it's, it's really not bad, but you're going to get really great prices. Even the plane, uh, tickets are a lot cheaper. So just a note for yourselves, if you want to travel here, that is a great season to come. Also, if you're somebody who doesn't like beaches to be crowded, when you think, oh, I'm going to go on vacation to a beach and you're thinking I'm going to be walking down the beach like this couple, low season is the time that you'll be able to do something like that. Okay. And so one thing to also consider when it comes to mid season and low season, what some individuals will do they will actually take their property property off of the short-term rental sites like Airbnb and VRBO. They'll take their property off of those sites so that they can do three month or six month rentals. Okay. And so for some people that works very well for them, um, knowing that, Hey, I'm not going to have as many Airbnb guests. So I'm going to go ahead and put it, you know, on Facebook marketplace or something like that, because there might be somebody who's going to be traveling here and they're like, Hey, I want to spend the summer in the Dominican Republic. You know, I want to take my kids away for the entire summer <laughs> and um, and they're not going to want to stay on a resort if they do something like that. So that happens a lot as remote work continues, you know, for a while there, because of 2020 remote work became really, really big. So lots of people were moving abroad because they could basically work from anywhere. We are seeing um, companies are kind of stopping that now. However, there's a lot of people who still do it with VPNs and things like that. So just know that there will be people, you know, at times who may want to do a six month lease um, and maybe your property is the property that they'll want to rent. All right. And so the last season, guys, is the holiday season. OK, and I do want to make sure to understand that um, they do not celebrate uh, Thanksgiving here. That is an American holiday. Uh, so if you come here in October, they barely celebrate uh, Halloween a little bit, but definitely not on the level that the U.S. does. So for the most part, if you come here at the beginning of October, you're going to see Christmas trees and you're going to see uh, Christmas. You're going to see Christmas for basically three months. OK, so this is considered to be the holiday season, the Christmas season, November through December. Um, and so what happens around this time of year, this to me is shocking. It's not as many people here as in high season, but you will definitely see a lot of people here, which is very surprising to me. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. Number one, people get end of the year bonuses. So a lot of times, and sometimes people will get them early, right? So they can do their Christmas shopping. And so you'll have a lot of people we're seeing more and more where people are saying, hey, I'm not gonna give my kids a whole bunch of presents. I'm gonna give them one present and I'm gonna travel. I'm gonna give them a two week, holiday in the Dominican Republic for Christmas. Like that literally happened last year. I had two of my friends come into town the same exact week and it was Christmas week, you know, and they were here. Um, and it wasn't until I moved here to Punta Cana that I realized how many people actually travel during the holidays. They don't want to be home. I'm the opposite, right? <laughs> I want to, I like family traditions. I want to be with my mom and my dad and my cousins. I want to be with everybody. But no, there are a lot of people who like to have Christmas at the beach, mind blowing. Um, and so you will see a spike in activity and prices. So you want to make sure that when you're setting up your VRBO, your Airbnb, when you're setting those things up, that you go ahead and put in on those weeks that you go ahead and raise the prices a little bit. And then of course, also, as I mentioned, people in the cold countries, as we call them, um, by October, you know, some of them are experiencing really, really cold weather, some of them even having snow at that point. And so, yeah, by December, some of them are like, look, it's time to go, <laughs> especially the older people. They're like, look, I'm not putting up with this. So you will start to see Europeans and Russians and, you know, people like that starting to arrive here. So you will start to see a spike in activity as it leads into high season. So those are the four different seasons when it comes to making money off of Airbnb here in Punta Cana. Um, so how do we really maximize your property's potential? Okay. Okay. So first and foremost, um, I mentioned some of these as I was going through. Okay. So make sure that you have your own Airbnb pricing calendar. You can do this, or if you're going to have somebody be a manager for you, they can do it as well. You raise their prices during high season. You, you lower them a bit during mid season. Um, definitely you can lower your prices or do the three to six month rentals during uh, low season, as I mentioned. And then of course, go through your calendar at the beginning of the year, pick out all the holiday weeks and just go ahead and raise the prices a bit because you know, you'll be able to make more money during those weeks because there's more demand. 
All right. So then how do you research to be able to say, well, what should I be charging, right? The best research, guys, is to see what people are already charging, right? We don't want to just come off, uh, off of your head with anything. You want to look and see what is the market actually doing, okay? So one of the things that you can do is search for near, uh, nearby properties and neighborhoods. One of the things I always say on these calls and other calls you should always come here to visit, right? So we have a couple, I have a couple of people right now that are in purchase mode. And every single one of those people who are currently purchasing, they have been here for a visit of some sort, even if it was just to see the the different neighborhoods, okay? Um, you wanna be able to know if you see a property, what neighborhood that's in um, so that you can do some comparison, right? You want to put in the amount of bedrooms that you're considering. So if you're looking at buying a two bedroom, two bathroom, right? So that's what you want to look for when you filter our properties when you go on Airbnb. Again, I'm saying Airbnb, but you can do this with any short-term rental sites. There are multiple sites out there. Airbnb isn't the only one. It's just this one is the most well-known. So that's why I'm using this as an example. Um, and then you look at their prices, look at what they're charging, but also look at the number of bookings that they're getting, okay? Because you may have somebody who's charging $2,000 a night, but maybe they're not getting any bookings with that price point. So look and see how booked up their calendar is. We have um, one of the properties that we manage. It's about a five minute walk uh, to the beach and it's priced very low right? So it's a nice property in a nice area, walk to the beach and it's, it's priced very low and it, it turns, okay? It turns. Um, so one person leaving, the next person is, you know, coming in, flying in, right? Um, so you can look at, okay, do I want to have a lot of activity? Do I, do I want to make more? However you want to do it, but what you want to look at though is at that price point, how many bookings are they actually getting, okay? You can also look at the reviews for clues as well. So if you go to a property and you're like, oh, this is near where I'm thinking about purchasing and you look at the reviews and if people say in the reviews, oh, it's so far away from the beach or it's really hard or um, the neighborhood didn't seem um, safe, which that really shouldn't happen in Punta Cana because you know it's pretty safe around here. Um, or you know, even there's a lot of construction going on, right? So it could be something like, oh, well, the road wasn't finished you know, or something like that. Or another thing too is, because there is such so much construction and expansion going on, there are new neighborhoods being <laughs> literally being made up <laughs> as we speak. So sometimes Google Maps can't find the new neighborhoods because things are being built up so fast. So sometimes, you know, if somebody is running a, a, a Airbnb and they're having to Uber everywhere, right? And sometimes the Uber driver can't find it because it's not on the map yet, right? So those are some of the things that you wanna think about. Like, and, and the thing is I always wanna give you guys the good, the bad, the ugly so that you can make great and reasonable decisions, okay? Um, the other thing too, you can do is Google communities as well and just see if you see any reviews or anything. And then here's a good thing, along with coming here and actually doing a neighborhood tour, you should actually book an Airbnb. Like I think sometimes I'll, I'll watch like Twitter and people say things like, well, who still uses Airbnb out there? And I'm like, I do because I like to, you know, feed the hand that feeds me, <laughs> right? Um, so when I travel, I use Airbnb and vacation rentals a lot because I, I'm the person who's also doing the same thing. So I want to help other owners as well. And so it's important if you're not a person who rents Airbnbs on your own, if you travel and you only stay at resorts, it's going to be that much more difficult for you to really understand and put yourself into your customer's shoes about what it is that they're going to want and need when they actually check into your property, right? So I recommend, you know, listen, if you're going to buy here, that means that at some point you're going to come here and you're going to stay in your property, right? So you may as well get used to staying at Airbnbs also. Um, because then too, think about things like um, even knowing like what restaurants to go to or things like that. So it is important that when you come over here, yes, yeah, stay in a resort, have some fun and all that kind of stuff. But if you can try to book an Airbnb so that you get the experience. And then lastly, um, one of the things that will help you in your research, guys, is finding a good manager. Okay. Finding a good manager. Finding somebody who's already here, who's already knows about different neighborhoods, who already knows what's what will work and what won't work, that'll help you out a lot too, because then this person has done all of the sweat equity of finding out the research for you. 
but they, and they have all that information. So you don't have to do it. Okay. So let's just practice real quick. Okay. I just want to take a second and just show you guys real quick. Like if we were to go onto Airbnb right now, now I just went on here and I typed in Punta Cana and I put the date for March 14th through 17th. And if you remember, this is during high season, right? So I'm like, okay, let's see what we have available. Okay. And so one of the things you can do is you look at the map and you see what people are charging. Okay. And these are per night rates. These are, these are some amazing uh, <laughs> locations because the prices are super high. But one of the things you can do is you can just see how these people are advertising. Okay. This person is charging 1300 per night. I'm going to be real with you. Okay. If you're getting a two bedroom, two bedroom condo in the normal part of Punta Cana, um, you're probably not, you're, you're definitely not going to be able to be charging that. This is a home that has eight bedrooms, right? So that's why they're charging this much. Uh, this house right here has nine bedrooms. So they're charging $729 per night, okay? But let's go down and let's look at some things that are just basic. And that's why I said it's good to go in and filter it based on what you need. So let's just say we only need two guests, right? Um, or let's do three because most of you guys are buying a two bedroom, two bathroom. So let's say three. So that means that they automatically have to have two bedrooms. Here we go. Okay. For three guests. Okay. There we go. Now we're getting a little bit better. Right. And so you just kind of play around with it. Right. So here, um, this one is, um, a VIP beach area, $99 per night. This is a beach penthouse. The thing is the closer you are to the beach, obviously the more you're going to be able to charge. Right. Um, I'm pretty much, I think I know exactly the building that this is right here, $116 per night. So you'll look and you'll see um, what other people, how other people are advertising and you can just go in and see, okay, where, where might I be able to advertise? Right. And so of course, also the map is here. So if you, there's an area that you're thinking about buying, just use the map. Okay. All right. Please reach out if you all have any questions about that. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So what is going to be your competitive edge? So this is an important thing to think about, okay? As you just saw from those ads, you only have like a sentence. So basically a sentence and your opening picture that really you will use to get people to click on your property, okay? So beach access is a very, very highly favored <laughs> word, right? Because no one travels all the way here from Russia or Germany or from the US. Nobody travels all the way here to not want to at some point go to the beach or be close to the beach, okay? So obviously buying beach property is really, really expensive right now. And if you're trying to get a condo, you know, two bedroom, two bath that actually you can see the beach from your windows, right? You're looking at probably three or $400,000, right? Um, a lot of people, you know, want to kind of stay in that 100 or $200,000 uh, range. So what I recommend is if you cannot give your people beach access, make the beach convenient. So there's several properties right now that we have and that we're working with where they're not on the beach, right? They, they're actually probably 10, 15 minutes away from the beach. You have to actually drive to get there. However, they have beach access. They have shuttles that go to the beach. They have a beach club when people get there. You know, so there are ways that you can actually, um, there are ways that you can actually make the beach convenient. So even if you don't have beach access, your people will still be happy. Um, restaurants and nightlife, right? That's another thing. You're going to always get that question when people are about to check in a couple of days before they're going to say, how far away is restaurants and nightlife, you know? And so um, you want to, number one, try to get some place that is close to, that has stuff there. Um, because when people go on vacation, even if they're in an Airbnb, oftentimes they don't want to cook, you know, the resorts, everybody knows the food isn't really that great. So a lot of people opt to go Airbnb style because they know that they can go to the restaurants here and the restaurants are going to be much better. And by the time they put it all together, they're probably going to pay about the same as they would to stay on a resort, but the food will be a lot better. Right. So being walking distance to restaurants, or quick Uber rides. That's the other thing too that you can do as well. So there's a property that we manage that you really, you can't walk to the beach, but we have beach access, meaning that um, anybody that comes to that property, we actually have a pass where they can sit on the beach at the resort 
um, at the end of that neighborhood. Um, and so that's that's kind of a selling point. However, in order to get to the beach, they're probably gonna take an Uber in order to get there. And so what I normally say when people ask the question of, hey, um, is it close to the beach? I'll say, hey, it's a, it's a $2 Uber ride or a two minute Uber ride to get to the beach. Okay, so no, it's not going to be walking distance, but if you get in the car, you'll be there in three minutes, you know, not a problem. Um, the other thing that, and this is one that a lot of people don't think about. I see this a lot as I'm going and looking at properties in office area, even if it's just a desk, especially when it comes to remote work right now, there are a lot of people who want to be, especially when you think about Airbnb, right? People who um, are going to come and rent your property. A lot of times they're going to stay for two weeks. We got one part right now, the next person is staying for two weeks. The person after that is staying for an entire month, okay? And so when you start thinking about things in terms of that and what do people really want and need, a lot of times people are looking for an office area that has internet so that they can work while they're here, okay? So even if it's just a desk, try to see if you can do that. And I see a lot of people right now where they'll have three bedrooms and I'm like, well, most of the time, people don't need three bedrooms in an Airbnb, but what would be good is two bedrooms and then one turns into an office or an office that has a futon, right, that you can pull out. And then that's going to actually end up being um, a, a third bedroom, but you have a work area. So I wish more people would actually do that. Um, the other thing, too, is I know for me personally, I hate and I use Airbnb a lot as well as VRBO. Um, but I hate when people have crazy cleaning rules and I've actually contacted Airbnb and canceled an Airbnb, got them to cancel one because after I booked it, the person sent me all of these, this stuff. And I was like, this is ridiculous. If I'm paying to stay here, I should not have to do all of this. Right. Um, an Airbnb in that case, you know, because it kind of got weird through text message. Um, they were, they were actually willing to cancel my reservation with that person. Um, so yeah, guys, if you're going to be charging a cleaning fee, which you will, don't give them crazy cleaning rules, hire somebody to clean and keep it at that, right? That's what, that's what you got to think about. And so what are others that you can think of? So if you're watching this replay, go ahead and write down a couple things that you can think of that'll give you the competitive edge. So let's look at what are some money drainers in the business that you do want to consider. Okay. Number one, electricity. Electricity is actually very, very expensive here. Very expensive. More expensive, I think, than the U.S. I pay probably four times what I pay in the U.S., okay? So here in the Dominican Republic, in some cities, not so much in Punta Cana, but in some cities, you will see people pay people charge their Airbnb guests for electricity. I personally don't believe in that. And I don't charge people for electricity because I just believe it's good customer service. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times people will send you messages before they book. And one of the top questions that we get all the time, even though it's already in the listing, one of the top questions we get all the time is, do I have to pay for electricity? And when I say no, people are like, oh, great. you know. So it becomes a selling factor. However, just know for you, it is going to be something that... Um, will be a cost you know uh one of the properties like when we got the electricity bill in may it was 300 dollars for one month right because it got hot and i guess the the airbnb guests they just were just running the air <laughs> so um so just know that so there is something here in in punta cana that a lot of people use especially people who do airbnb they're not here you know they're doing short-term rentals they do what's called prepaid electricity. Now, living with it all the time, I hate it, <laughs> but I do see why people will do it for Airbnb guests. And so what that means is basically, um, if you're like, okay, this person is gonna be here for three days, they shouldn't need more than, I don't know, let's say $60 worth of electricity based on what we know, okay? Um, and so you go or your manager, whoever prepays and puts $60 worth of electricity on the account. Um, and then if they run out of electricity and yes, all the electricity will go out. If they run out of electricity, they then have to contact you to get more on. And so if they do at that point, then you charge them. So that's a, another way that people do it. But like I said, I, I don't like when people charge for electricity and I have canceled Airbnbs here uh, because someone was charging me electricity. I, I just won't do it. 
um house supplies that's the other thing um so just no one remember especially if you have a good airbnb and, and that thing is getting rented out all over and over and over again your towels and your sheets even your curtains maybe they're going to be these things are going to be washed at a rate that is nothing like what they've been ever done before you know for your own home right because if you have a stack of towels in your home you may have a stack of towels and they'll pile up for a bit but pretty much if people are coming and staying for two days or three days or this or that like your items are going to be washed over and over and over and over you know um and so that is something to consider so your 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 stuff will wear out and so you will have to replace your sheets you will have to replace your your um towels you will have to replace your cleaning supplies a lot because i know we teach our cleaners that sometimes people think well i was just here two days ago so it, it shouldn't be that bad but it's like no you have to clean everything as if everything is dirty you have to mop you have to sweep you have to wipe everything down because it is literally like running a hotel right so you are gonna you are gonna be using your house supplies more than you would um like at home so just you and you do have to budget for that okay um cleaning of course um everybody can charge a cleaning rate on theirs uh, i think we normally charge 60 bucks um, on our properties. Um, so you can charge a cleaning rate. Um, and what some people do too, the way, if you decide to hire a cleaner here, and honestly, you can probably find a cleaner here for about 40 bucks who will clean a two bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Um, and if you charge, uh, $60 and you give them 40, you can, you even made a profit, you know? So I, I just say, Hey, listen, just go ahead and hire somebody to clean, you know? Um, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm gonna start a business, but then they end up cleaning it themselves. I would just add that as a part of your, um, as a part of your P and L, um, and do know that it may take you a minute to find a cleaner that you like. Okay. So the first couple times may, you might be like, nope, not that person. Nope. Not that person. Nope. Not that person. Um, it may take you a while to find a good cleaning person, but it is important that you do. And especially if you can find people who are very, very thorough. Here's a quick little story, just, you know, so that um, you understand what I'm saying. We got a review on one of our Airbnbs uh, last year and um, young lady had basically listed a whole bunch of things. She was like, you know, the people are really nice and the property, you know, this property is a little bit older, which it, it is, it was an older property. But one of the things she listed in her review, she said it was dusty. And she was she was angry because she was like, I paid a cleaning fee and it was dusty. And so, you know, I responded and I said, what do you mean it's dusty? It's like, we walked you through the apartment when you got there, you didn't complain, you didn't see anything wrong. We didn't see anything wrong. What, what was it? Like, how did you see dust? And she said, my son dropped something on the floor and it rolled under the bed. And I went, I, I leaned down to pick it up and I saw that there was dust under the bed. Now, <laughs> granted, yes, the cleaner should absolutely be cleaning under the bed. And so we definitely had a conversation with our cleaner to let them know and remind them like, hey, don't, don't, don't skip anything. Like, even if it, you can't see it, make sure you're going under, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Because this is how petty people are, to be quite honest. It's, it's almost like, really that's what you're complaining about but people will find things to complain about right um i don't know if she wanted money or so i don't know what what it was but but she she was like oh it was dusty but she didn't say oh it was dusty under the bed i'm like okay um so those are things that you will have to sometimes work with your cleaners on and helping them to understand like you have to clean every single aspect, even if you were here like two days ago. Um, and what I recommend, if you can find somebody who's formerly worked in a hotel, because they're going to understand the concept of having to clean everything. Um, the other thing when it comes to um, money going out is going to be management. Because I, I, obviously most of you guys are still in the US. You're not going to be moving here anytime soon. But um, management, there are lots of management companies out here. It's going to be the same thing with cleaners. You just have to take a minute. Sometimes you might take a minute to find one that you really like working with. Um, and usually they are going to charge about 30% of your income. Okay. So if you make $1,000 for the, for the month, they're going to charge $300 um, for their fee. Okay. 
Um, and then the other money drainer, the other thing that can really take money out of your business, guys, is you visiting at the wrong time. So if you decide to come when everybody else is here and you decide to come in high season, you're actually going to cut into your profits. So it is important that you make sure that you come and visit your property when nobody's really there. So summertime or September, October, those are going to be great times for you to come visit. We actually have one of our properties right now where the owners are there and they're there for um, 60 days for about two months. Um, but they decided to come this time of year because the rest of the year, you know, their property is booked up. <laughs> All right. So to sum it up, guys, know your profit seasons and plan for it. We gave you a great plan for that. Know the area that you're buying and the potential ROI by doing the research. Look for alternative ways to give them what they want. And then remember that management is a really great idea. They're going to already kind of know how things work. They probably already have uh, cleaners on board. Um, and ultimately, they'll be able to help you with some of the things that we discussed today. Okay. All right. So speaking of... Um, having a great property and getting started with investing guys we do have a covest right now and for those of you guys who don't know what a covest is please go back and watch um our video from last week where i explained to you this but overall basically to sum it up we have a program for those of you guys who might be new investors or you're not ready to make a full financial commitment um, in our Covest program, we pair you up with other investors so that you can own beach property um, here in the Dominican Republic. We currently have a Covest called Sun Village Covest 832. Um, we've already reserved this property. We already have two investors and we're just looking for two more. A couple of things with this property that you're going to receive as an owner, you get 24 hour security. You, um, you get... Um, a second floor gym. There's going to be two very large pools. There is going to be a mini mart as well as a reserve. I'm sorry, a restaurant with parking. These are all things that are very important when it comes to listing your property. It's also going to be eco friendly, and it's going to have a lot of green and vegetation around. It is a one bedroom, one bath. It is fully furnished. Okay, so when this building is complete in 2025, it will be they're ready to go. Literally, you can go the next day and you can actually stay in your property. Okay. And of course, because you're sharing it with four other investors, you guys can work out the schedule of when you all want to be able to come and visit the property so that you can stay for free. Right. Um, so it is fully furnished with the top of the line appliances. And we did take advantage of pre-build pricing. So we were looking for something under a hundred thousand dollars and guys, we got literally the last unit uh, for under hundred thousand dollars, we secured that unit. Um, and because of that, guys, we have a very manageable payment plan. And remember what I said that most of these properties, by the time they are completed in two years, you've gained 30 to 50% in equity. Okay. You also get access to a boardwalk beach club. All right. And so at the boardwalk beach club, you and your guests will have private beach access with lounge chairs. You're going to have an indoor lounge area with a private bar, lockers um, that give you peace of mind. How many of you have ever been to the beach and you're like, oh, excuse me, can you please watch my stuff for me while I go in the water? Or can you please watch my stuff while I go up here to order some food somewhere, okay? We actually have lockers so you don't have to worry about doing any of that, which honestly, though, in Punta Cana is so safe. People, we leave our stuff all the time, okay? Um, and then they do, they will have private bathrooms and showers. How many of you hate going to beach bathrooms? I hate it. I absolutely hate going to beach bathrooms. That's why I like living close to the ocean so I can just walk home when I need to go to the bathroom. But with this beach uh, club, you actually have access to private bathrooms, private showers that are not available for the um, to the public. All right. And here are some of the images of what this property looks like. And so this is how this co-vest will work. Um, as I mentioned to you guys last week, there are several ways that we can do it. Number one, invest and then resell. Or number two, invest and have lifetime dividends by getting the profit of the short-term rentals. These, this group has chosen to do passive income for a lifetime through dividends, right? So as the income comes in, it will be divided amongst the investors, okay? Um, and so we did want to make sure, excuse me, we did want to make sure that we um, 
took advantage of the pre-build rates, okay? And so that we can get that 30 to 50% equity. And the other thing that uh, goal that we have for this COVEST, and this is based on what the partners wanted, we wanna achieve full property ownership through interest-free payment plans, okay? By December, 2025. So as you're gonna see with the payment plan, by the time this is done two years from now, the property will be completely paid off. And so from that point on, you are simply making back your investment. So how does it work? If you want to be a part of this uh, COVEST, it's 60, it's, I put 6,600, it's actually 6,500, 6,500 to join. Um, and then it's $300 a month, which I think is pretty reasonable for anybody. It's $300 a month for 25 months. The projected plan for this building to be completed is December, 2025, okay? And so by that time, as a group, you all will have paid off 50% of that property. So at that time, December, 2025, you will then make a final payment of $11,000 for the most part. You can do that several ways. If you've saved up the money, you can just pay it at that time. If you wanna go take out a loan on your own, a bank loan or um, you know, a house loan for that 11,000, you can. And then you can um, pay the loan back out of the profits that you're earning, right? Um, but that's basically how the plan works. And what some of the women uh, in this group have opted to do, part of the reason we kept the monthly payments low is so that if people want to, they can pay more little bit by little bit so that at the end, when that final payment comes, they've already knocked down a lot of it, okay? So again, yes, early payoff is allowed. And there is something else to take into consideration. After COVID-19, the Dominican government basically gave permission for developers to increase the price after the contract has been signed. So what does that mean for you? Um, because you will see, if you look at one of the things that people say, oh, don't buy overseas and don't buy in the Caribbean, don't buy in the Dominican record. One of the things that they'll say is um, developers can increase the price. And that is very true. And what happened was during COVID, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but prices for a lot of things skyrocket, especially in construction. So a lot of the developers came in on the, the bad end of that. And so they had to give that cost over to the consumers. And so that's when you started to see people like, oh, the price is rising, even though I already signed a contract. So what this company has done, what they have done is they have basically said, okay, we want to be able to cover ourselves, make sure that we protect ourselves, but we are capping it at 5%. So if there is an increase, they are capping it at 5%. So it'll, and 5% of 96,000 guys, um, you're talking about maybe $4,000. And so between the, the four investors, that's like one payment basically. Okay. So, um, it's a, it's a really good deal. Um, and as we said, the anticipation, the anticipated property completion date is December, 2025, but do make sure that you understand it is con construction, right? Sometimes construction can go longer, you know, hopefully it'll go a little bit shorter, but the great thing is if it does go longer, then we have the ability to continue doing that payment plan while they're continuing the construction, okay? So if you are interested or if you know anyone who might be interested in this, please go ahead and contact me or go to bit.ly slash covest832.com. If you're watching the replay, just go ahead and use your phone, the QR code. It will take you right to this page right here where basically it's going to ask you to fill out some information. And from that point, we'll be able to contact you and put you into the LLC um, so that you can go ahead and join this COVEST. We're very excited, okay? Um, and then lastly, let's end with this, everybody. So as I mentioned several times through our calls you know, this month, we do want to make sure that you know where you're investing. So we highly recommend going on an investment tour with us. Um, we have two investment tours coming up, one October the 5th through the 8th, and then one November 17th through the 21st, okay? And on that tour, you get a couple of different things, guys. Number one, you get to come here with an expert who lives here. We can show you the different neighborhoods. That's one of the biggest things so that you'll know where you want to purchase. Um, we'll show you the, the different restaurants so you get to experience actually what it's like to live here. Um, you'll get to meet with do multiple developers, all right? So you'll be able to see what different developers have to offer, who you want to work with. We're even organizing it where we can uh, get you guys connected to bankers as well. For those of you guys who might want to do a mortgage so that you can understand because every bank is a little bit different. 
it's a little bit different. So you'll be able to understand the loan options. And then we're going to close off that week with a boat party. All right, with a boat party, guys. And that's all a part of that um, plan. And so if you want to register for that investment tour, please go to traveltradeinvest.com slash events. The pricing, everything is there. And this month right here, for anybody who signs up for our upcoming investment tours in October or November, you will get a free five-day, four-night stay in Cabo San Lucas. All right, we are paying for your hotel stay. The only thing you have to pay for are the taxes and fees by the hotel, but the stay is completely free with your reservation for the investment tour. And one last thing, <clears throat> one last thing we've been able to get for you guys. I'm so excited about this. Some developers here in Punta Cana do have what's called fly and buy, which means if you come here, you do an investment tour with us and you decide to buy one of the properties from um, the main developer that we work with, they will actually pay for your travel expenses up to $1,500. So they will pay for your travel expenses up to $1,500. That's a pretty good deal. So for the investment tour, guys, not only will you get all of the things that we listed, you'll basically leave understanding exactly how to buy your property and to see everything that you need to see, but you'll also get a free trip to Cabo San Lucas, as well as the trip that you're paying for, you uh, could potentially get that covered as well, all for free. I love it. I love it. So thank you guys so much for the call. I'm excited. I cannot wait to meet you guys here in person. I can't wait to take you to the beach. All right. And definitely join us next week for our next call, which will be another topic on investing here in the Dominican Republic. I'm Tammy Washington, Nissan Dion. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking some time to visit Travel, Trade, Invest.